Hello everybody, welcome to another IZ8 DWF arcade video. Here I have a Zakaria Space Fortress Logic PCB. This is actually a Cinematronics PCB with modified game ROMs. Space Fortress is in fact a probably authorized copy of Cinematronics Star Castle Black and White Vector Arcade. Also, this PCB is almost identical to the Zakaria Space Pirate Logic PCB that was shown in a previous video. If you haven't watched it yet, I suggest you to pause this one and have a look at it first. By the way, that Space Pirate board set has been reinstalled in its cabinet now, as you can see. And the red LED you see in this video is the spot killer circuit of its monitor triggering, as it happened on my own vector monitor, so clearly even this monitor was modified probably by entirely disconnecting the spot killer circuit output. Many small sockets on this board are like this white one, and they seem to be of good quality, having a kind of a spring contact that touches the pins on both sides. I won't substitute them if not necessary. However, the larger 24 pins sockets are the infamous read ones that gave me many problems in almost all Zakaria arcade repairs, so I decided to at least substitute the ones holding the 374LS181 ALUs. For the moment, I won't substitute the ones holding the 4 EPROMs. We notice also that the EEPROMs have the pin number 21 lifted out of the socket and jumped to pin 24, which is the positive 5V supply pin. Let's understand why they needed this mold. In this series of boards, Zakaria used 2716 EEPROMs. As you can see from this pin out, they lifted pin 21, that is VPP and that pin gets the programming voltage supply and shouldn't be required during read. This is the Space Pirate PCB that was featured in a previous video, and here the EEPROMs have no lifted pins. In this PCB, pin 21 is connected to the 5V rail, like most EEPROM datasheets recommend for the read operation. However, on this Space Fortress PCB, which is probably an earlier revision, pin 21 is jumped to ground. Now, this should not be a problem, as anyway, the programming pin should have no effect during reads unless it's brought up to the programming voltage, which in the case of a 2716 needs to be 25 volts. Turns out that some manufacturers including Motorola, decided to add a very nice and useful feature to their 2716 EEPROMs. So let's have a deeper look at the datasheet. As happens on other brands, they indicate that pin 21 should be tied to the 5V supply in read mode. However, they added a note. In read mode, if VPP is higher than VIH, then G is active low. If VPP is lower than VAL, then G is active high. Now, VIH and VIL are just the logic thresholds, so it means that if VPP pin is kept grounded, or in other words, at a logic zero, the G pin, which is the main output enabled pin, will reverse its active polarity. This feature was not common to the 2716 of most other brands, so I'm sure that Cinematronics or Zakaria didn't mean to use active high enabled pins, and as soon as they tried, to use Motorola 2716, nothing worked until they lifted pin 21 and jumped it to pin 24. Since I was asked to provide also spare EEPROMs and I want them to work on any board, either with pin 21 jumpered to VCC or jumpered to ground, I've just decided, since we are in 2023 and we can buy any old EEPROM, to use 2732 as spares. On a 2732, pin 21 is the A11 address input, so by programming two consecutive copies of the content into a 2732, this will work fine with either A11 at logic 1 or at logic 0, because all the other pins 
have identical functions as on a 2716. I have only the logic PCB of this game, so I'm using the audio video PCB of Space Pirate. Sounds are not correct, but the video output works. The attract mode seems working, but I think the X and Y deflections need some adjustment. Also, it seems I can coin up, but not start the game. That's bad. Of course, the game has a test screen mode, so the video PCB can be tuned to have continuous shapes, as indicated in the manual. The squiggly vectors are an artifact of the noisy power supply I'm using. Now I need to know if this screen looks correct, since it's the first time I see this game. For instance, the star field looks non-uniform and some letters look a bit too short. This is a still image that I rotated to match the inverted deflection signals produced by this vector game. I've looked on YouTube for other Cinematronics Star Castle and Zakaria Space Fortress videos, and I found a couple of interesting ones to compare what I see with this board. First of all, it seems that the star field is indeed correct, as you can see here. And, in this other video, it appears that the letters are indeed identical to the ones I'm seeing. So far so good. The colors you see in both videos are obtained with overlays over the black and white CRT. By the way, links for both videos are in the description down below. I decided to replace also the Ebron sockets, not because I think they would solve the game not starting issue, but because I'm going to experiment with the newly programmed Space Pirate 2732s. So here they are. And this is the Space Pirate test screen. The attract mode works fine. Coin input works too. And the game can be started without problems. Now, I suspect the issue is just due to a wrong manual, because according to the Zaccaria manuals, both Space Pirate and Space Fortress have the same wiring diagram that you can see here. So, if the board has no issues with the Space Pirate ROMs, then the only plausible explanation is that the actual wiring for Space Fortress is just different. So I decided to look at the Cinematronics Star Castle service manual, and indeed the pinout is different. Here is the 30 pin connector on the logic board. The start button for one player game corresponds to pin 11, but the Space Fortress manual indicates pin 14, which is wrong. Also, the two players start button corresponds to pin number 9, but Zachariah manual indicates pin 12 which is wrong again. The game controls too are almost all on different pins, so at this point I can put back the original EEPROMs and try all the relevant inputs again. Let's try again now. Credits work fine. Let's start a two players game. And yes, it works. Now I'll take some time checking all the game controls. If I can hit the right pin, of course. Vector games have spectacular explosions, don't you think?
Okay, seems all is working fine, so this PCB was not particularly difficult. And it's all for this short video. I hope it was interesting to see this quite uncommon arcade game. If you have any question, please use the comment section below. Have a nice time and thank you for watching.